Hello, everyone on Facebook and YouTube. I'm getting set up today to make kin queso from the new book. So I'm going to show you the photo from the book. And when you guys join in, let me know what you've made from the book. I'm just trying to see. Oops, no, I don't want to see that. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, when you are here joining in, I see some people joining. Hello. Tell me what you've made from Drina's Kind Kitchen so far. Today we are making kin queso. And the name is my take on pumpkin uh, based queso. So this one is nut free, oil free, and of course, dairy free, vegan. And it's so incredibly easy to make. So we're going to go through the steps of making kin queso today. All right, I have to prop my book up. Tell me where you're joining from, what you're doing. And there we go. I do have to read some of my ingredients. So um, people say, do you remember all your recipes? No, no, not at all. I remember the ones that I make all of the time. So ones that I go to time and again, the measurements are in my head, but if it's one I haven't used for a while, I may know the general ingredients, but hey, I don't remember all of the measures and certainly a lot of times don't even remember all the ingredients. Hi, Mary, she is, Oh, the book came earlier this week. Hi from Utah. Nice to see you, Mary. And what do you make? Have you decided what you're going to make first? Hi, Karen from Oxford, Mississippi. Uh, let me know either what you have made from Drina's Kind Kitchen or what you plan to make first. Uh, from Long Island, New York. Hello. Nice to see you, Marlene. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed the recipe. So we're going to get started with this one. And uh, as I mentioned, this is a nut-free queso. And in the book, I get some ideas for like add-ins and such. But what I'll say is you can also make this not a queso, but rather just a plain cheesy dip. One of my friends and recipe testers and readers, Molly, did that the other day. And just took out the things, the elements that make it queso-based make it that um, Southwest kind of flair with the chili powder and the cumin seed. So if you remove that and go with the base ingredients, it's just going to be more of a cheesy sauce. I will make another sub idea or, or mention another sub idea as well. Okay, so let's get started. So this is the base for our queso. Yeah, when you join in, let me know what you've made from Drina's Kind Kitchen or what you plan to make. This is the base. Okay, what are you seeing there, guys? Got guesses? Can you sort out what that is? It's not sweet potato, even though I use sweet potato so much. What are you guessing here, guys? Can you see it? I'm not getting any guesses. Hi from Northeastern California. Hi, Lorna. Hey, vegan goddess. Nice to have you join. She's saying, I love, and Lorna's saying she loves the new cook. Thank you. Have you made anything? Yes, Nancy knows me well. White potato and pumpkin seeds, which I mentioned the recipe is called kin queso. So it's a play on words being pumpkin. And uh, this is what provides the base. And if you think that pumpkin seeds are a strong flavor and you'll notice them in here, you won't. You really won't. And they give the body sort of that whole foods fat that you need for a recipe like this. I mean, you could make it completely without any fat, but it loses that um, sort of, what's the word? It loses like that mouth feel that you want with a rich uh, dip like this without some whole foods fat. From Portland, Oregon, vegan goddess, nice to have you. And Karen, yes, pumpkin and potato and some carrots. Uh, KB is saying, Mandy, saying she made the recharge cookies. Awesome. Tell me what you've made from the book, guys. So pumpkin seeds and potato. This was the cutest potato. Oops. So I'm going to tell you this is cooked potato and also carrot. So in the recipe, I offer a mix of carrot and red pepper. I just wanted to use carrot tonight. These are pre-cooked potatoes. 
So I generally, this time of year, steam them in the Instant Pot and then pop them in the fridge and you have them ready for use in recipes or just to like heat up and eat as a side or to repurpose for a recipe. You guys see, I do lots of recipe renewal in the book. So it is cooked. Now I prefer yellow or red potatoes being red skinned potatoes. Russet potatoes for me, they don't have the best flavor or texture. Um, you know, they're kind of like the potato that is used for uh, French fries commercially, but in terms of eating potatoes straight up and not having to douse them with tons of like, you know, oil or vegan butter, red and yellow potatoes are your best bet. Um, vegan goddess saying she loves raw pecans. Oh, these are pumpkin seeds, but hey, I love raw pecans too. Um, there we go. Getting those in. And oh, I was going to mention, okay. There is a link in the description, one to the book. If you don't have the book and you want to find out what is this book about, Drina's Kind Kitchen, there's information there. And I also have a link to Amazon. If you guys are loving it, if you could please add a review, would be very much appreciated. And then I also link to these pumpkin seeds called Scuda. Now, that is not what I'm using in here. You could use them and then you could just reduce the salt slightly but these pumpkin seeds are the best snacking pumpkin seeds ever i'm telling you guys they're delicious i did a video on these before and i actually ordered these by the like case from amazon there's six bags in a case i first discovered them in a store in canada called dinners which uh they just kind of have like you know in canada what winners is um, if you're in the States, it's kind of maybe like uh, um, Target or something. And I'm going to show you the pumpkin seeds. Here they are. They're darker, much darker. They are like dry roasted. I think they're dry roasted. Are they sprouted? I'm not sure if they're first sprouted. Um, they're just amazing. I don't understand why they're different in size. I think it's a different variety of pumpkin that they use. I think I read that before, but they're really delicious. And I just love snacking on those in the nighttime. Like, mm, they're delicious. So, and they have a flavor that's also um, like a little bit spicy. So if you like spicy things, you'd love those. Um, so guys, if you have made any of the recipes, I want to know which recipe you've made first or which one you want to make first because I want to do some videos of the recipes that people are really loving. So I want to hear from you on that. My dishwasher is running so it's a bit noisy in the background. Okay, so I have in here, as I mentioned, the pumpkin seed potato and the carrot. I do all of the, the blender is going to cook here. So it's going to cook the sauce. You could transfer it to stove top and cook it, but the blender is actually going to do all the work. I'm adding two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, which isn't a lot. Like if you really hate nutritional yeast, you could leave it out. I don't use a ton because I don't want the dip to taste like nutritional yeast. I just want it to taste that background note of cheesiness. And we need some salt and chili powder. So as I mentioned, if you want to make this cheesy and not queso based, my, there's my dishwasher beeping, so I've got to open it. Now it's steaming me. <laughs> I'm going to fog up in the camera here, guys. Ooh. I was out for a bike ride with my youngest today. Holt, and we were, we had a gorgeous bike ride in the sun um, down in an area called um, um, Serpentine Fin here. And uh, it was so lovely to be out in the sun, but I don't, like, I don't bike ride a lot. So my butt's already hurting. <laughs> TMI. My butt's going to hurt tomorrow. Um, okay, so that's cumin seed. Oh, I didn't mention this is cumin seed. Okay, so a lot of times queso call for ground cumin. You can use it if you want to use ground cumin in place of the cumin seed, you can. I just really love cumin seed. It has a very, uh, it tastes a little earthier and nuttier. I'm going to just put the camera so you can see that's cumin seed. And it's handy to have if you're, oh, my dishwasher is going to beep again. If you do a lot of Indian based dishes, cumin seeds is really useful to have on hand because if you're doing authentic Indian dishes, curry powder is not really used 
instead, because what they do is they actually use the base uh, spices to make the curry flavor rather than a curry powder mix. And this is one of them. Um, and I'm just seeing any more. Okay, so I haven't heard many more feedback. Do you guys have the book? Do you have the book? Let me know if you have it. Are you making anything from it? And what you might plan to make. Um, okay, and now we need, let's come and see, we need a little bit of chili powder. So I have a mild chili powder. If you love the heat, you know, add more. Generally, if you love the heat, add more. Uh, I always suggest offer that you make the recipe as it is and then adjust after. Um, well, guys, I, I will mention too that if any of you want signed copies of the book, uh, there are some still available through Talk Shop Live. I did a book demo there, or not a book demo, a book party last week during my launch week. And so if you want to pick one up, they're also a little less expensive. It's, um, I'm going to put it in the comments here. Hang on. They're $19.95 on Talk Shop Live. I'm going to pop it in the comments and you guys can see. There you go. That link. There we go. And I, whoops, signed book. So I'll just add that again. So if you want to get that link, uh, follow that link, then, then that's going to give you, um, go over to Talk Shop Live and you can get a signed copy of Drina's Kind Kitchen for $19.95, which is a little less expensive than Amazon. Okay, back to the recipe. Boy, I'm already off track like so much. My daughter rolled out my limes for me, which I appreciate because. When you buy limes, they're generally really firm. And if you roll them out, then it loosens up all of the pulp inside and helps release the juice for when you do your, you know, when you're juicing to get the, the good juices. Um, the dressings. Lauren is thinking about the dressings. Definitely try the Buddha dressing. Go for the Buddha dressing first, especially if you love nutritional yeast. And Kim saying... Uh, the Beyond Beepers. I made so much of those this week. I'll tell you that story in a moment. Okay, did I say I added garlic? No, it's a clove of garlic. This is a pretty large clove of garlic. You could use less. And we need some milk. I'm using oat milk. Just make sure it's plain oat milk. You don't want vanilla oat milk in here. So it's a cup, I think. Yeah, it's one and a bit. So I'm going to add a cup. I'm actually going to start to puree this and then add the rest of the milk. One and a quarter cups. Okay, so I'm gonna start pureeing this. It's gonna be a bit noisy. Okay. some more ingredients and Kim saying she's made the chocolate zucchini bread awesome that's a good one I'm glad you tried that one it's also especially good with extra chocolate chips I, I say that all the time when making bake making anything like muffins you can always add chocolate chips uh so that's a little it's a little more oat milk than a cup and then we're going to get the lime juice out um so what was I talking about I said I was going to tell a story Oh, the beet burgers. So I did a TV segment with KTLA last week for the book launch, and they're in Los Angeles. And I prepped five recipes. They wanted to sort of showcase five on the screen. So that was a lot of work. I got to tell you guys, there was so much going on. And then I was prepping these recipes in advance. And so the beet burgers would, I see, I tend to use my fingers, not even a reamer, just get in there and get the juices out. Limes never have seeds, whereas lemons are always full of seeds. It, well, organic ones anyhow. And um, they wanted me to demo the beet burger. So in order to demo, so this is two tablespoons of lime. So I was gonna mention about the citrus is if you wanna make this not Southwest version, like make it just a cheese sauce, then use lemon juice instead. Cause the lime makes it taste more like that you know southwest flair and um so the beet uh, am i all over the place today guys i really am um yeah lorna you're gonna love the buddha dressing definitely make it i'm gonna show you the buddha dressing i am in 
I'm like, I have, I'm on five speeds here today. I haven't been on camera for a few days. That's why I've got like a lot to talk about. So the Buddha dressing is right, right here, right there, right there. I'm going to show you the dressings. So I have an oil-free dressings ebook, which a lot of you already know. So in the salads and salad dressings section, I made, I made the like specific plan to offer some salads with a, a dressing in the recipe, as in that's kind of the recommended dressing that I would use, right? The one I'd use for the dressing. My cat's very unhappy. Would you like to come say hello? No, uh, he wants to go outside. And he's an indoor cat, so he cries at us all the time. Um, and he got out today and got under a truck and it was a whole thing. Um, so this rainbow slaw has a dressing included in the recipe. And then I have a sunny curry dressing and a Buddha dressing. Uh, guac your world. And another silly play on words using avocado. Ninja dressing. I did this one on... Um, Tammy Kramer's YouTube channel, Nutmeg Notebook. So if you go over to her channel on YouTube, you'll get the recipe. Cilantro lover's recipe. Well, yeah. when I did this dressing, my photographer, she hates cilantro, poor girl. So God love her, she made this dressing, had all the cilantro everywhere. And she said to me after, I really hate cilantro. So I guess she didn't eat the dressing. Italian vinaigrette and oil, all of these dressings are oil-free. So my readers love this. I use it in the picnic pasta salad and they love it, love it. Creamy house dressing, it's kind of good staple. And then here's another example where the dressing is in the recipe, Mediterranean abundance salad. That's the one I'm also making on the front. And it's got like all kinds of goodies, beans and grains and vegetables. And it's in this sort of Mediterranean inspired um, dressing. And then uh, oil-free croutons. That's the picnic pasta salad. Couch potato salad, which again has a dressing in the recipe. So lots of oil-free salads and dressings. Smoky kale Caesar. I think we had a Caesar recipe in every one of my cookbooks. And this one, um, I went this way with this recipe after we were at a restaurant in Edmonton and we had a Caesar with that smoky flavor. And I was like, I, I got to do a Caesar like this. So that's that one. Potato croutons, so good. I love potato croutons. When I make them, everyone just eats them straight up. I have a Mamazon, which is, <laughs> that's my daughter named that one, Mamazon, nut free perm a balsamic reduction, so easy. Then a sunflower salad with the dressing in it. So I could keep going, but they're sort of like meal salads with dressing included in the recipe, but then there's also dressings as a side. So I have to get back to our guys. Am I ever distracted today? Wait now. Okay. So I'm going to get back to the queso. I'm just going to pull up the recipe again. And Come back to it. There we are. All right. So we've got to add now. What else? Um, okay. I need to go get some coconut milk, which I'll also talk about. Hang tight. Okay. So this coconut milk has been refrigerated and well, it was in the garage too. So it may not be super set, but generally when I use coconut milk, I refrigerate it and then allow that thicker cream to come to the top and then measure. So I'm using two tablespoons and I'm going to tell you why I'm using it. A lot of people have a big issue with coconut milk and coconut products because it's higher in fat and it's saturated fat, but I'm using two tablespoons in this recipe. It's such a small amount. And if you want to sub it out, yes, go for it. Use more non-dairy milk. You could also use a richer non-dairy milk, like a plain coffee creamer. That's what I often suggest to people use is like a plain coffee creamer. But I'm using two tablespoons. And it just adds that tiny amount of lusciousness that elevates the recipe. So I've already had some people complaining about the coconut milk in the in the book. And um you know, it's I've got to say it's a little hard to read and hear when the book just comes out and there's complaints about there being coconut milk in it. 
I don't use it in all the recipes. I use it in some of the desserts, not all of them. I use it to make some recipes not free and I use it um, for that lusciousness in certain recipes. My cat's so mad. Can I go get him to show you? Oh no, he's run away again. So, you know, the book is out and I'm already hearing like, I want to sub the coconut. I can't use coconut. Um, it's a small amount. If you want to sub it, a plain non-dairy milk, go for a richer plain milk, like a soy milk or a coffee creamer. And you know, there's balance, right? I love this video that's on YouTube. I'm, I'll try to dig up the link after from Dr. Colin Campbell, who is, you know, plant-based nutrition, godfather guru. And he says, you know, a small amount of coconut is not a big deal. We shouldn't be stressing about that small picture when we have the big picture of encouraging people to eat plant-based and encouraging them with delicious food. So if you have a dietary need to eliminate the coconut, I understand. Um, this isn't a disease reversal cookbook. I did a disease reversal cookbook with Dr. Barnard and this one isn't, but even if you are following that diet, there are so many recipes in this book that will be suitable for you. Like I would say about 60 to 70 recipes will be good for you or maybe more, whereas 20 to 30 wouldn't, right? So um, yeah, I just, I got to share that because I've already addressed it a lot of times online and in emails and I hope that we find more balance about coconut products in time because it is a plant food. It's not metabolized the same way as animal products. And, you know, we're not sitting down and drinking a can of coconut milk <laughs> with toast, right? Anyways, let's get back to this yummy recipe. So if you want to sub that, go for it. And now I offer add-ins. So here is where you can add, my cat is going crazy in the background. Um, more kick to the recipe. So you can buy a jar of jalapenos mm -hmm, and use the brine and add some of the brine from the jalapenos. Or you could even um, add some of the whole jalapenos from that jar and that will add a lot of heat. I like adding just a little bit of chipotle hot sauce. I have a link to that as well. So you can easily find what these items are. This is a tab Tabasco, and I did check with the company. This is vegan, and Chipotle adds like a smokiness that's like mm, 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 good. It's like mm. it's not just like using sriracha, which which is just did I say that right? Sriracha is that how we say it? I don't use it a lot, so I know that there's probably the very proper pronunciation, and I likely did not say it. But this adds mm, smoky heat. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Good. So I'm just adding just a couple of dashes and you can add more later. And Livro, Alberto, is it Al Alberto? Livro, is that your first name? What a beautiful name, Li Livro. I hope I'm not um, really harshing your name. It's a beautiful name. She's saying, or he's saying, nut-free recipes are very much appreciated. Thank you. And... <laughs> <laughs> vegan goddess says she wants to take a bath in young coconut water right <laughs> that's sounds like a good idea okay so i'm going to puree this up and then the other idea is to add what is the other thing i add is to also add um some crushed red pepper right so most of us have this crushed red pepper on hand and you could add some of that so i'm just going to give this another good puree here okay so Cover your ears, this is gonna be the very boring part of the video, but maybe you get to enjoy a break from all of my jabbering where I'm going to heat it enough or puree it enough that it will heat it, okay? So I'm putting it on the soup and syrups and fondues, syrups, I guess, fondues setting. This is a Blendtec. Uh, I've had a Blendtec for about 15 years. I love the company, I love the product. Um, I do have a link for you for 20% off. If you want to go link through, it's in the description. And the code is yay hash, yay dash. Yeah, yay hash. Yay dash Blendtec in caps. 
the link is up there if you want to look at it at Blendtec. What I recommend if you want to buy a Blendtec is get a refurbished unit. I talk about this all the time. They basically refurbish the mo motor and it's like brand new and the housing and everything is brand new, but the price is much better. That's what I started with with a Blendtec. So um, anyhow, I work with Blendtec to help offer you a better price um, and full transparency on that, right? I'm an affiliate with them, but I only affiliate with brands that I love and use, which is, this is one. Okay, I'm gonna blend. So now I'm going to keep blending until it heats. So this is boring. Go get a tea, get some chocolate and come back. how hot it is because this is blending it to heat it and thicken it and cook it this is like brilliant you can avoid the whole step of putting it in a saucepan and heating it so when you see me doing that i'm just checking to see if it's getting nice and heated up so it can do the work and then you can clean up while it's doing it oh it smells so good look at it guys look at that so it's steamy i forgot how good this recipe is look at that i might mm -mm. and hi kim thanks for joining kim is a frequent reader a viewer she's thank you i appreciate that about the coconut milk yeah you know it's it's a perspective thing so here it is nice and thick look at that look at that guys and then you can top it off i love cilantro on this i you know i didn't always love cilantro i do enjoy it quite a lot now um but in the right recipes right like if you just put cilantro in a salad you may not love it but when it's with the right components and flavors mm -hmm. a little cilantro in there and then you can top it off with a little Pico de gallo. Spoon. I don't want all the juice. I just want a little bit to top it off. Boom. Nice. Look at that, guys. Doesn't that look good. What do you think? It's now see how easy that was? And look how much it made. So that's a full bowl. This is like a soup bowl. And I have a cup and a half here. So I think it makes about, it makes about three, it makes about four cups. Yeah, about four cups. Yeah. So now those of you that have Drina's Kind Kitchen, make it, make it, make it, make it. Here's the beauty pick, the real beauty pick by my photographer, Angela. Make that recipe. It's so good. You know, you can have it with tortilla chips or 
You can drizzle it on baked potatoes and spuds. You can drizzle it on kale, steamed kale. You could drizzle it on quinoa, brown rice. Did I mention sweet potatoes? So good on sweet potatoes. Um, you could do the stuffed sweet potatoes in the book. Right now I'm gonna show you those. There we go. Drizzle it on those stuffed sweet potatoes. Um, so many things. It's just delicious. Easy, as you can see. And um, yeah, Kim, definitely give it a try. And Kim Baker saying she's going to make a black bean, black bean with homemade salsa. Ooh, that sounds good. That would be delicious with it. And um, yeah, so this recipe also might be online. Um, Karen's asked about the recipe. I haven't posted it yet. I'm just featuring some of the recipes from Drina's Kind Kitchen and I'm kind of inviting people to see how they're made and what's in it and doing a tutorial. But the book's out now and it's 100 oil-free plant-based recipes. And there's a link in the comments for Talk Shop Live if you would like a signed copy. If you have a copy and you're loving it, I'd appreciate a review on Amazon. I know some of you have, Kim did, thank you. And um, yeah, that's it for today, I guess. Uh, does anyone have questions about the recipe or about any of the ingredients that I used today? i will just give it a second and see if anyone has any questions. I don't think so. So I'll pop back and look at the comments after and see if there's any questions. And Kim, I did post from the book, my fluffy pancakes. They're on my site. So that's the book when it came out Tuesday. I posted this recipe Wednesday and they are on the site and they're like the easiest thing. There's four main ingredients in those pancakes. So you can hop over to my site, drinaburton.com and um, get the pancakes. Nancy says, she should be getting her book tomorrow. Oh, good. So you pre-ordered and waiting, I guess. Um, hey, Vegan Goddess has been vegan over 20 years. Me too. Congratulations. Um, oh, that's a, such a sweet thing. Uh, this channel is like classical music for my ears. That is so beautiful. Um, I've been vegan over 20 years too. I started just about over 25 years ago and then, you know, slowly made the shift. So well done, um, beautiful. And um, Kim is asking about the link for Blend Tech. Yeah, in the description, so you're on Facebook, Kim, go to the description for this video and I'll pop it in the comments here too. Hang on, I'll just grab it. Um, I'm just getting it off of my thing here. And Blend Tech, just putting it in the comments there for you, Kim. So that link, oh, and you need to use code yay blendtech, and that, which I will also post. Um, code yay uh, dash blendtech will give you 20% off. And that is on the refurbished two percent. So definitely go for a refurbished unit. And sometimes they have sales. So when they have sales and I get those emails, I will also put that out to the groups that, you know, you're following me, Facebook, um, my Plant Car Families group, um, and maybe I'll post on YouTube as well so that you can get the extra discount. Sometimes they like 30% off a blender and then you get the bonus. Like that's an amazing offer. And uh, there was something, another question. Um, oh, sure is asking, can it be served both hot or cold? Yes, absolutely. So when you blend it like this, it's already heated up for you but you could certainly put it in the fridge and it's going to thicken more as it refrigerates because the potato will start to firm up again in the, in the mix and the seeds and everything, it just thickens a little bit more. So absolutely, if you like a cold, you could um, use it as a dip almost. It's gonna thicken more and you can use it as a dip for say, um, you know, potatoes, tortillas or whatever, lots and lots of things. Um, oh, and you could also drizzle it in a tortilla and then fill it up with ingredients and roll it and make your own kind of burrito on top of pizza, make like a Southwest style pizza, or just have a regular pizza crust, throw a few toppings on there and then drizzle it on either before or after cooking. And if you do it before cooking, it thickens up more. If you do it after, it's a little fresher. And I mean... Oh, Lorna's asking about coconut butter. Lorna, I'm going to put a link for you to a post I did on coconut butter. 
coconut. That's not coconut milk. It's coconut butter. And here it is. It's a post I did. It's called A Few of My Favorite Things. I'm just going to put that in the comments. Um, and you'll see what it looks like and where to buy it. Generally, most stores have it now. You can also get it on Amazon. Uh, let's see. Here it is on Amazon. Just going to post that for you. I want to make sure you guys get these links. Amazon Coconut. I'm typing without my readers. God knows when I'm actually typing in there. So there, that's the, for you, Lorna, for coconut butter. And coconut butter is not coconut oil. So coconut butter, think about almonds become almond butter, peanuts become peanut butter, coconut becomes coconut butter. It's the full coconut product pureed. And that's why it's different than coconut oil that's been extracted, much like almond oil or peanut oil. That's the difference. Okay, guys, I think I answered the questions. If there's more, they can filter in later. Oh, hey, Cindy, just saw you joining in. Nice to see you. And um, oh, wow. Vegan God is just saying she became vegetarian at age five. Age five. That's so cool. 43. So you were vegetarian before it was even like known in the world about 43 years ago. Beautiful. That's so cool. My kids grew up vegan. So our three girls now 20, 16, and 12 all grew up eating this diet. So yeah. Okay, guys, I will wrap it up there. Is that my wrapping it up? It's time for me to exit, I think. <laughs> Hi. So make the queso. Enjoy. And um, it smells, I'm telling you, the cumin seed makes a big difference on flavor for me and really make, like bumps it up a notch. So get yourself some cumin seed, it's dirt cheap, get a big bag of it in the ethnic section of your uh, grocery store and you won't regret it. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, see you guys. Thanks for joining. I'll answer more questions after. See you soon, bye.